south tomorrow a mixture of sunny spells and heavy thundery showers bbc news it's three minutes past seven sue marchant's big night in here we are it's uh, sue marchant's big night in welcome along tonight we've got fantastic live music from duo the black feathers a journey into the fabulosity of the beatles from writer joe robinson a natter with founder member of the yardbirds jim mccarty and a wonderful live music unplugged and exciting from a new band but steeped in experience cane rising plus of course all the usual madness the cosmic chord and all of that and what is it um and social commentator frizz the chicken who will be telling us what's coming up on tonight's show in just a moment they stay safe wherever you are in our next hour we're going to explore the fabulosity of the beatles um, Frizz the um, Chicken will be talking about uh, the Beatles, but we will be talking to Joe Robinson, who lectures and does all kinds of things. He's, he just knows. He's a, a lifelong fan. And uh, he's written a book. We'll be talking to him in a little while. In the meantime, get your ring every time. It's time to hear from the chicken. Have you got a favourite Beatles song, Frizz? <laughs> I feel fine. That Shirley, who keeps trying to get a word in. feel fine well let's go on to a journey now a journey into beetledom and i love this world the fabulosity of the four square golem and uh, to tell us about his um well um lifelong fascination and knowledge about the beatles is joe robinson he's on the phone now hello joe Hello, Sue. Now, you must be um, a very well-qualified person to uh, to write this, this lovely book, which the cover is just am amazing, but don't judge a book by its cover. It's really quite deep, isn't it? So tell me your story about the Beatles in the first place, when you first became a fan. Ah, right. Uh, well, I, I first came across the Beatles uh, not long before my seventh birthday, which is many, many moons ago. There's a lot of people agreeing here, Joe. Uh, when they appeared on the local Granada TV early evening news programme, it was called People and Places. That was in October six, 1962. Um, I remember them, uh, they sang Love Me Do, and apparently they sang another song, Some Other Guy, but I was too young to, to recall that. Uh, I do remember clearly, however, that my father... Uh, said uh, they'll never make it with long hair like that <laughs> and my mum turned around and said oh uh, they just said they're from Liverpool and, and I think they're quite good and I of course agreed with my mum and uh, from that moment on um, my curiosity about those Beatles with an E because I hadn't noticed the different spelling was peaked and for a seven year old it, it was one of the first times I'd heard pop music that I, I really liked um, I liked Bare Lives Ugly Bug Ball being already one of my early favourites, so maybe it was it was the insectoid theme which stirred my young oh. imagination. Um, and then when the Beatles returned to, to the TV on the same programme 16 days later and performed Love Me Do Again alongside A Taste of Honey, I was smitten and I caught the Beatle bug <laughs> and I've had it ever since. Now, you also lecture, don't you, in Beatles? You are, you are a renowned knowledge of the Beatles. Right, yeah. I, 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 I think I was the very first person on Merseyside who set up, um, this was about 10 years ago now, who set up a, a digital course, you know, uh, PowerPoint and video and mm. that, on the Beatles. That was about 10 years ago, in you know, for the Liverpool's Capital of Culture bid. Oh, right, yeah. Um, and um, Merseyside Education uh, asked me to do that, and I did that. Um, I've got a background in English literature and, and what's called the history of ideas, which is basically philosophy. I've got a master's degree in that, so that's my, my background. Well, I've I've got to page fifty three. All right, all right, which is which is good for me because I do you know <laughs> I, I kind of like settle down and start reading. Yes. And there are certain bits that I have read again in this beginning because of getting my head round of That's right. of of and, and you really have given me something to think about because they really did have um, I I don't know we were 
we weren't sucked into it or dragged into it. We went willingly to the Beatles. Exactly. Yeah. And that is something that has defined a lot of the youngsters band's music, um, a lot of the way um, we think about things. And, and they did it all, four guys from Liverpool. Oh, now, yeah. you take this so much deeper. Why did you want to write this book? Right, well, the, the reason why I wanted to, to write it was, um, well, obviously I'm a big Beatles fan. Mm. I, re I read a book in 1994 by a guy called Fritjof Capra. Uh, it was called The Tao of Physics. And in it, um, Capra um, links quantum physics to Vedic Indian philosophies. And of course, the Beatles were into Vedic and Indian stuff. So that, be, as a Beatles fan and someone who, who'd written a bit, bit about the Beatles, mm. that got me thinking. So I delved into it. And it came about that there was an absolute wealth of sometimes subliminal clues in their songs and in their music, uh, not only about Vedic philosophy, but also about quantum physics, which is wild, really, when you think about it. It's, yeah, I, that's why I kept reading, well, yeah, and then I read a little bit more and said, oh, um, and so I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Why do we need this? Well, to be honest with you, I don't know whether I don't know whether we need it or not. I mean, we, and the thing is, the future is quantum physics. I mean, that that's so. In one way, we might need that because certainly, you know, quantum physics. I think, un unfortunately, probably has a, a big part to play play, play in our futures. Um, but it was Spencer Lee, the BBC Radio Merseyside on the Beat presenter Spencer Lee said, "If you're going to write a book about the Beatles, yeah. then you know, um, then write something different." something a bit different because apparently there are over 6,000 physical books about the Beatles, 6,000 and 1,500 Kindle books. Um, That's so astonishing. I didn't know there was that yeah. many, isn't it? So I thought, well, if I, I want to write something, I'm going to write something different. So delved into it. I looked at it and uh, the book isn't just about quantum physics. The book is about the Beatles' childhood the childhoods and it's also about their close-knit coterie of friends in Liverpool that sort of uh, who, who some of who are quite academic themselves like Bill Harry um, from the art college in Stuart Sutcliffe the fifth Beatle mm. and they were discussing these kinds of issues in those days and it sort of filtered through however subliminally into their attitude towards their music Mm, okay, stay right there because we're going to see what's happening on the roads and then right. we'll be back with you. So, okay, uh, Joe Robinson talking about the fabulosity, I love that word, okay. um, of uh, the Four Squared Golem. Anne Marie has the lace on the roads. Are you a Beatle fan? Oh, I am indeed. Yeah, fantastic yeah. songs, aren't they? Oh, hello, goodbye, the Beatles. And hello again to Joe Robinson. We're talking about his book, Journey into Beatledom. And um, it is a head scratching book. But it's really interesting in the way that um, they were so cosmic, weren't oh, they? Absolutely. I mean, for example, uh, Paul McCartney's here, there and everywhere describes the, the, what's called the superposition, superposition of a quantum state in which everything is both a particle and a wave at the same time. It's here, there and everywhere. Lennon's lyric, Nothing is Real, is a paraphrase of a quote from quantum physicist Niles Boer and others. And Maxwell Silverhammer refers to two forerunners of quantum theory, James Maxwell Clark and Thomas Edison. And then you've got other songs, Tomorrow Never Knows, Within You, Without You, Penny Lane, which I could give a literary analysis of. Um, really? Now. There's a place, think for yourself, the word cover related themes and the fool on the hill is not only about the maharishi mahash yogi but it, it's said by some researchers to be about a guy called uh, buckminster fuller who designed the bucky ball and delved into many areas of philosophy and science including quantum physics in the 60s and he was he was definitely known by the beatles <laughs> we're all thinking of them in such a different way now now yeah. within the book as well you you go through just every um recording they've made every song yeah and um how many times i mean did you listen to things and then how for instance um let's think about um i don't know paperback writer for instance yeah we you know fairly straightforward your book is a paperback yeah um which is my cosmic connection to you because i have this theory that we're all cosmically connected connected in oh, different definitely, ways yeah. um but um how did you feel that when did you first start to get that take and you you when when you thought about writing something different or or had this been something that had been on the back burner for a while and that you yeah. you kind of fell into i think 
I think amazingly enough, when I was a child, I always thought, without really consciously knowing it, that the Beatles were a bit special. Not because they were just, not because they were from Liverpool, because there were lots of bands from Liverpool mm. in, in that period. But they were clever, they were funny, they were witty, and they always seemed to have the finger on the pulse of what was happening and to be sort of a step ahead of everyone else. Mm. And as a child, I used to think, wow, that's really good, that's cool. And that's why I started thinking about them more deeply because I thought, well, how come they're always a step ahead? Um, Ian MacDonald in Revolution in the Head turned around and said that, you know, the Beatles were the unacknowledged legislators of populist revolt. Um, and they always seem to be sort of behind the scenes controlling things. And I thought, well, how can that be? Because they're just a pop group. Mm. But So that's why I looked into it. And it, it seems as if, they, th there was a lot of information coming at them, I think, and they just sort of reflected it back at their fan base mm. and at the, you know, the, the uh, chattering classes, both here and in America. And of course, then, of course, the intelligentsia started getting into them and they were just reflecting it back at people, I think. How did you feel as a fan, you know, when, when the band said, that's it, we're not doing any more? Oh, my God. Uh, well, you know, so I was a bit older then and I, I, I was... I was shattered in some respects, but in another respect, it's quite nice the fact that, you know, there's, there's, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to the Beatles. Mm. And don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not one of those people who thinks, oh, Beatles versus Rolling Stones, because I love the Rolling Stones, because the Rolling Stones are fantastic. But the thing is about the Stones is they go on and on and on and on. And there's, there's periods in their career where some of the music's a bit patchy and, and some of it's fantastic. Whereas I think every single Beatles album is a crafted album in its own right, you know. Mm. And just, you know, listening to, to your passion there, with the amount of information that they were reflecting back, and they did change attitudes. Oh, definitely, yeah. You know, and, and said lots of different things. Um, and, you, you know, we vote, um, for instance, when John Lennon said, you know, well, we're, you know, we're bigger than Jesus Christ. That was, yep. you know, uh, sort of a, looked upon as something, my goodness, you know, how, how could he ever say something like yeah. that? Yeah. But... But he was the type of person, it seems, that kind of sort of said it. Yeah. Well, well, I think what he was reflecting was the paucity of, of spiritual sort of, yeah. um, you know, sort of integrity in the Church of England and maybe even in the Catholic Church too. In, especially in Britain in the 60s, the, ch heart, the churches were half empty. Mm. And the, he was just saying, we seem to be more popular than Jesus and... He, he, he said, and he, and he meant that's wrong. He didn't think it was a good thing. He thought it was wrong. Mm. But obviously, in the United States, especially in the Bible Belt, it just went crazy. I know, they were burning records and all sorts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I yeah. mean, they'd probably think that. With all that information that, you know, that was going round and the different things they were reflecting, do you think that, you know, that at that time, it, it, it was the right time to, to finish the band and, and move on? Uh, I do, actually, yeah. I think you know naturally they'd grown older they were family men uh, and also you know there's a uh, um lennon's um the way lennon sort of writes songs and the way he thinks about music is he he's a he's he's interested in harmony mm. and harmonics whereas uh, so his songs tend to, to, to not go up and down very much, whereas McCartney's songs are quite melodic and go up and down a lot in terms of the music. Mm. And so I think the seeds of their eventual musical uh, differences were all, always there, but in the early days, the, the, the fabulosity of the four square golem, as I call it, mm. was the fact that, that John, Paul, George and Ringo were able to keep it together. Mm. because they loved each other mm. and and Ringo kind of being the down-to-earth person yeah yeah sort of he was the glue that held held them together in a sense I mean I think the first person who wanted out of the Beatles in some senses was George Harrison really yeah uh, George Harrison wrote a song on um their second album uh, with the Beatles called don't bother me mm. and uh, Bill Harry was was telling me about it bill harry kept nagging him to write another beatles songs because funnily enough the very first two beatles s songs that were written by the beatles were uh, a harrison mccartney and a harrison lennon uh, not lennon mccartney 
And you see, I'm learning something here. There you go. I'm learning something here. There is so much. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still find you're discovering things about the Beatles? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, with all those books out there, there's an awful lot out in the public domain that people already know. Yeah. But there are snippets of stuff. I mean, Bill Harry's writing his biography, and I, I hope when that comes out, people will buy it because it'd be fantastic. Um, and he knows an awful lot because he went to our college with John Lennon and, uh, you know, Bill's getting on a bit now, but, he, you know, and Spencer Lee, again, he knows an awful lot mm. about what went, went on in Liverpool in those days. Mm. Um, I, I did a bit of work, you know, with the Cavan DJ, Bob Willoughby, before he passed away. Oh, I was going to mention him because he, he was really at the, at, yeah. you know, at the, at the hub of it all. Yeah, well, he was like the godfather of Mersey Beat, mm. in a sense. Mm. Um, Bob was a, a, a very erudite literate man himself and it, um and i spent about six months helping him put together the manuscript for his um you know for his his biography which mm. spencer lee eventually wrote called the best of fellas but um you know a lot of this is in journey into Beetledom. it's uh, there's quite a lot of this information in the book as well mm. Mm. you know it's not just a, a scientific book in fact it, it's a cross be really between an academic reader and, and a straightforward narrative you know a story in other words it's different it's very different and yeah so are the beatles <laughs> well there you go so <laughs> you've captured it all you've captured I think, well, it well hopefully i mean you know i th spencer lee said to me you know you got you're taking a risk and i said well I i'm prepared to take that risk and have a crack at it and and it was my passion anyway so um you know but now it's starting to get out there and people are starting to find out about it and hopefully it'll do okay yeah, well, maybe it's the penultimate book that's, you know, that's there for people to understand yeah. inside there within the songs. Because I find it really interesting about how people get ideas for songs and, yeah. and, and you know, nine times out of ten people say, well, about four o'clock in the morning you get an idea or I could be yeah. on the bus. And, and most people tend to be travelling or they get a cosmic download about four or five in the morning. Yeah. Well, it's like that guy you said earlier on your show. You've, everyone's got smartphones and laptop yeah. so now you just if i wake up in a cold sweat i just write it <laughs> <laughs> and then go back to sleep um for people who are thinking oh, i don't know is this book about me why do i need to know this yeah um you know what was what's your answer to them well i think politically in the, the way the world is now that we need a bit of peace and love in, in the world so i think that message you know, or anti-war thing, because mm. the book has political strands to it as well. There's quite mm. a lot of politics in it towards the end. Mm. Um, and I think that message that we're all in this together, and where have we heard that before? Mm. <laughs> yeah. That we're all in it together um, is in an important message. Mm. for the. And you said before, you know, you feel as if you're cosmically connected to everyone else. Well, that's what the Beatles were saying, really. Mm. They're very interesting. How did they influence you, say, in your in, in your fashion and your dress in those early days? Oh you? my goodness me! Well, I mean, to be honest with you, you know, in when the Beatles hit in the late '62, early '63, I was only a seven-year-old boy. Yeah. You know, in Liverpool. Yeah. Um, so I was a kid, but obviously, by the time I was fourteen, fifty, my my hair was over my shoulders. Yeah. You know, I was wearing the the, the hippie long coats, and we used to go. Um, you know, thumbing it round the country. <laughs> Afghan coats and loons. Afghan coats. And, <laughs> and I was a grammar school boy like them, so, you know, I was quite well read and we were interested in all, in all the Indian stuff. And Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's still there, isn't it? It and is, it, and yeah. Well, I, I think in modern lifestyles where people have this sense of self-improvement, you know, and all the modern treatments that we have now, all, all that comes from that period. And, and, and George Harrison wrote a, a song called Think for Yourself, mm. which is a Beatles song. Mm. And it, it's interesting um, also that uh, we're still under the influence. You know, we still have Paul McCartney and we still yeah. have Ringo Starr. So we are still under an influence. Their, their influence has been, you know, going through things. And we've looked at Paul sometimes and thought, oh, dear, yeah. you know, you shouldn't have done that. But yeah. He's, you know, a f fantastic songwriter, still writing Oh, he still songs. writes some great yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it was Melvin Bragg who said on, on the uh, South Bank show, when the anthology was done in the mid-90s, he said, the Beatles' uh, influence is still unravelling. That's what he said. Unravelling. Yeah. Mm. Cosmic stuff. Yeah. Um, let's put you in the cosmic camper. 
Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah, the cosmic camper is is you know it's it's the ultimate quantum experience. It's, right. It can take you anywhere. It's a bit like Doctor Who's TARDIS. All right. Yeah. Okay, so it can take you anywhere. Fantastic. Yeah, in time. All right. Anywhere. Where would uh, where would Joe Robinson like to go? Where would I like to go? Yeah. Well, I'd like to go to New Zealand. I think. Would you? Yeah. Why? Because I think, it, 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 I've never been there, but I believe the two islands are completely different. Yeah. It's a bit like Britain, yeah. but it's completely different as well. So it's a little bit quantum, isn't it? Because it's neither one thing nor the other, and it's both at the same time, which is what quantum physics is all about. Okay. So I'd like to go there, I think. Okay. Here's our, here's our cosmic connection then, Joe. Yes. Um, I've got an uncle in New Zealand. All right. <laughs> so there you go, you see. Yeah. Maybe you might be able to take a, there you go. A, 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 a message or something for him. Yeah. There you go. Um, it's an interesting book. It's out there now in paperwork form. Yeah. Um, how long should I allow myself to read this? Because I'm taking little yeah, bits well, in, I, well, at a time. It, well, it, it depends. Some people are, are, are quick readers and some people are slow readers. But even if people read it quickly, I think they, they're going to have to sort of go through bits of it again and think, OK. It is also, that, I mean, it's a travelogue through their songs, so you can sort of flick to the songs and flick through it, you know. Even though it, it, it is a, a narrative and you, it does tell a story because from the early songs to the later songs. Yeah, OK. Well, then you can actually just flick through it if you want. Mm, we're going to play um, She's Leaving Home. What's right? uh, what? What's that one about? She's well, whew, well. I mean, she's leaving home. On the face of it, she's leaving home is about a, a, st a story of a young girl who who is troubled and leaves home. But in actual fact, if if you look at the, the um, if you look at the, um, the, the the song, then the parents are regretful about how they treated her. So, in an actual sense, there's a, 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 a sort of coming together across the generations in that there are, there are other interpretations of the song is that 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 she's having an abortion all right okay. so that, that, that's another one of them but as far as i'm concerned it's it's about it's a consensual song in a sense about uh, the parents regretting how they treated her and wanting her to come home changing attitudes again you see yeah. joe robinson thank you so so much oh, um, for okay. joining us on the show and okay, um thank you. i'll uh, i'll keep on our journey and perhaps it's one that um, will continue yeah okay thank okay. you so much joe. thank you sue Beatles, she's leaving home. Susie says she's not a particular fan. She couldn't really stand them. Um, so, well, that's okay. That's fair enough if um, you feel that way. Um, not everybody was a fan. I, like, I do like the songs. I must say they're very clever.